give us kind of your experiences so far, how bowl week is going for you, and, and what you guys think of Atlanta and, and the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl so far. Uh, well, it's, it's pretty good. It's pretty nice to be out here. Um, the weather at home is pretty similar to Seattle. Um, but it's been awesome just, you know, being here and just knowing where we were last year. And I'm, I'm thankful to be here. Okay. Miles? Um, it's, like he said, it's <laughs> fun to be out here. Um, it's a blessing. Uh, it was good to see all these guys on Christmas uh, when we flew in, uh, just kind of seeing like our second family and all that type of stuff, and uh, kind of getting out here, experiencing something different in Atlanta, different type of food, different type of people, all type of stuff like that, and uh, just getting ready for this game. Dante, tell us tell us about what you guys thought of the uh, Battle for Bowl Week competitions last night. Oh, that was fun. We got to uh, go go kart racing, did a little bit of bowling. Playing in an arcade, um, definitely having a lot of fun there. Uh, the I, last night I was trying to find a good place to eco, and everything was closed. So, if you guys have any suggestions, uh, <laughs> definitely would like that. We can we can probably help you out with that. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Jake, what about you? What did you think of the events last night? Are you saying you were getting passed by all your teammates? I was passed. Oh, okay. All right. Good enough. Thanks, guys. All right. Go ahead and raise your hand, please. We'll get you a microphone. Uh, if you would, just a reminder, uh, give us your name and to whom you're addressing the question. We'll start right here in the second row with Barrett. This isn't on. No, it is. Um, this is for John and Dante. Uh, Coach Peterson said yesterday that going that the, the secondary or coach sorry, Coach Saban said that yesterday that, the, that your secondary is a lot like the Seattle Seahawks. So what's it like going up against those guys every day in practice? Uh, well I think it prepares us very well for whoever we, you know, play um, in the upcoming week. Um, whether whether they're good in our secondary or not, uh, just because we feel like we're seeing the best, um, I think we we uh, prepare very well for the game that we're gonna play in. Uh, for all the guys up there or anyone who wants to comment, uh, Paul Newberry from Associated Press. Um, you know, obviously Alabama the, has this reputation uh, for defense and what they've done under Coach Saban. What do you see when you look at them on film and, you know, the sort of belief they're sort of, you can't move the ball against them no matter how good offense you have. Uh, what do you all see and do you see vulnerabilities there that you can take advantage of? Miles, let's start with you, please. Um. One more time, can you say that again? I, I stopped focusing. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> My bad. I, I thought it was for everybody. So was, oh, talk about the Alabama defense. Oh, uh, um, they, they're fast defense. Sorry about that. Um, fast, they're smart. Everybody runs to the ball. I mean, they give 100% each play. I mean, it's much different from any team I think we've ever played against. Uh, sometimes you can see a D lineman kind of just trotting down the field. But everybody's running to the ball. I mean, they play smart D, and uh, they all just uh, give 100% of each play, and uh, that's just different than we've ever seen. Dante, your thoughts on the Alabama defense? Like Miles was saying, they're you know they play hard, um, they're fast, their DBs are are pretty big, um, they're physical. Uh, you know, it's it's their defense is uh, kind of like ours. Um, you know, it's gonna be it's gonna be fun to go against. Against them. Jake? Okay, over here in the middle on the left. Charles Lewin with AP. Um, this is for, for Miles and Dante. Um, you guys have set all kind of passing records this season that you just showed in the Colorado game. What you can do when, when the passing game isn't working. Can you talk about that balance and what it means to you guys to, to keep, the, keep the, the defense as honest with your running? Um, it's just uh, one of those things you kind of 
you feel good about it. sometimes. I mean, we had a great year passing the ball. I mean, Jake, John, and uh, Dante, everybody was just doing great. And uh, O-line was holding up, pass pro and everything like that. But sometimes things fall through, I guess. And sometimes things don't just, just don't go the way as planned. And knowing that we could run the ball felt good. And I mean, it's one of those things where it's a good, uh, it's a good thing to have, being able to run the ball and throw the ball. So. Yeah, it's definitely good to have a, a balance of run and pass. Uh, you know, there's a lot of teams that can only pass the ball. There's a lot of teams that can only run the ball. And so it is good when one thing isn't working, you can always resort to the other. This is for Jake Chantel Jennings with ESPN. Earlier this season, a pit offensive lineman ran for a touchdown. And yesterday, Coach Pete joked that after that happened, a bunch of the offensive linemen texted him and were like, hey, are we going to do that this year? Were you one of those offensive linemen? I was one of the ones to text to, but I'm definitely the ones that should have. So I didn't, I didn't get around to my own to for a touchdown. These guys use it all the time. So. With the trick plays, I mean, are the offensive linemen sort of thinking, like, when, when's our moment to shine? Uh, yeah, but I think I mean, when you play offensive line, you kind of know that you don't have that many of those moments. Where are we going next, Kat? Okay, over here in the uh, right side middle, please. Karen Walk with the Tuscaloosa News. This is Gary Clark, Dante and John. What stands out most to you about Alabama's defensive backs, and how do you plan to go up against them? Uh, I think the physicality piece, uh, like Dante said earlier, uh, bigger, bigger guys than we've seen uh, this year. Uh, but I, I think we've got a good speed. Uh, I think our coaches are doing a really good job of preparing us for this game, and it'll be cool to see. Yeah, I mean, they're. They're pretty big. Um, they're they're strong, fast. Uh, they're they're a good group of DBs. But uh, like Ross was saying earlier, you know we go against Sidney Jones and uh, Kevin King every single day, and so uh, I think they prepare us pretty well for what we're going to see. All right, where are we going next? Time? Okay, we'll go over here in the third row left. Hi guys, Jeff Spiegel, WBMA Birmingham. This is for John and also for Dante. Uh, John, how satisfying has it been to have a year like you've had this year coming off the injury? And uh, I guess more for Dante, how advantageous is it to have two guys on the outside who are as good as you guys are? Uh, well, I'm, I just, I'm just thankful and uh, I've been blessed to be in a position that I'm in with this team and you know, just coming off of something like that is kind of hard to do. Uh, we got a good training staff and they you know, prepared me for this. And, Yeah, no, it's definitely good to see uh, Ross where he is right now, um, especially, like you said, coming off of an injury. Uh, and I think it's, it does a lot when you have someone like him that can you know, open up the defense, uh, whether it's for, you know, me or for Chico or Miles, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. Uh, you have to pay attention, uh, pay a little bit more attention to one person that opens everything up for, for other people. All right, time for a few more. We're going to get over here left side. Paul, please. Hey, for uh, Dante, I was, I was kind of talking to you a little bit beforehand about your father, and you were talking about some of the things he taught you off the field, um, you know, to help you in, in your game. I guess that he, I'm assuming he played probably high school football at least. Uh, can he, does he pass along any tips football-wise? And as a baseball coach, I don't know, does that translate when he's maybe trying to tell you anything on football? Uh, he thinks he can, but, but I mean, <laughs> He, you know, he, he's a baseball guy, so uh, he definitely knows football really well, but uh, some of the stuff doesn't really translate. Uh, he's, he's a good athlete, though, so he knows, he knows what he's talking about for, for the most part. Uh, he doesn't really try to tell me what to do too much. All right, where are we going next, guys? Anybody in the back? Okay, back here in row three, please. Alabama won the SEC championship mostly in dominating fashion. You guys won the Pac-12, you know, mostly in dominating fashion, yet you guys were two touchdown underdogs. I was wondering if all of you could address how the team felt when they saw that point spread and maybe how that motivates you in this game. John, start with you, please. I didn't know. We didn't hear about that, actually. Um, 
I just feel like, you know, this in this game, it doesn't matter what you look like. Um, you can be a hundred percent underdog or whatever. At the end of the day, you still gotta go out and play. Um, and that's our focus. And our focus on what the spread is and our what you know, people who are not playing say, you know. Um, our only focus is to our is in practice and you know, why this is what our coach is saying in our scheme. Yeah, like John was saying. I didn't see it either. I mean, like, but people are gonna write what they want to write and say what they want to say. I mean, it's like that's cool. I mean, y'all, that's that's somebody else's job, and uh, we don't buy into that. Our job is to play football. Yeah, other people's job is just to write stuff down. So whatever. Dante. Yeah, I was talking about that earlier. Um, you know, it doesn't really matter what they say the the spread is. You know, still both teams have to come up, come out and play. So really the only spread that matters is what the, you know, what the scoreline says after the game. So we don't really care too much about what the, what the spread is. All right, Jake? Time for a few more. Where are we going next, guys? Okay, right here in the front, please. kind of gave us that, hey, like, I mean, just, hey, we need to come back next week and the following week and after that, like, we need to prove ourselves now because, I mean, I feel like people are kind of trying to push us out the playoff and after that loss kind of just gave us that fire that, hey, we need to win each game from here on out with, like, dominance and, like, no chance for everything like that. So I feel like it just kind of gave us that fire to go out and finish the rest of the season like we did. Definitely gave us a little bit more edge. It, it, it had been a while since we felt that feeling you know, after the game, where you come in the locker room and everyone's like, "Man, what just happened?" Kind of. Uh, and so, I definitely think it, it, looking back on it, it was probably a good thing. Uh, we obviously would have liked to have won that game, but um, uh, yeah, it, it, I think it gave us a little bit more edge. Like, hey, we're we're not going to feel that way. Next question, please. All right, back up here, row three, please. I just want to go back to the uh, to the trick play question uh, from a while ago, and just talk about how uh, exciting it is, I guess, when you hear one of those plays called, and how good it feels to execute it, like uh, you did earlier this year, Dante. I mean, you put all these trick plays in, and you honestly only end up running maybe won a game. Uh, I know Coach Pete always has this huge, uh, you know, thing. Like, everyone thinks he runs, you know, 10 trick plays a game, but in reality, we probably run one or two if if we're lucky. Um, and so, you know, we'll have all these ones in, and um, I, you always get really excited when, when they're your trick play, and then you never end up running it. And so, it, 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 it's kind of, it's, it's kind of funny because you, I was joking with Coach Hamden about the, the double pass uh, early in the year. I was like, 
we're never we're never gonna run this play, so uh, I don't know why we're going over it. And then sure enough, that game we called it, and so um, it's it's definitely it's it's a fun thing to. All right, next question, please. Got time for maybe one or two more. All right, anything in the back? Are we done? All right, before we wrap up, we do have a very special presentation that we're going to sneak in real quickly. We've talked about the uh, Battle for Bowl Week competitions with victories in the go-karting and bowling events from last night. Washington has taken home the Battle for Bowl Week belt. So this is the official presentation. All right, get up in there, guys. Let's, we got to pose for a photo op with this now. You can and, and put that thing on. I will note uh, for the media, the team that wins the Battle for Bowl Week belt has gone on to win the game in each of the last six years. So after the first day of competition, Washington is up two to zero. All right, guys. Let's pose for a quick picture, please. Thanks very much.